live yet? We're live. Oh. It's about okay. time. <laughs> Hi, this is Randall with Zen Float Co. And I'm Mo. We haven't done a live together in a while, so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> Couple hey, months at What least. are we doing today? We are doing long-term float tank maintenance. So you often hear us talk about weekly maintenance, monthly maintenance, but we've been getting a lot of questions um, what you do after the first year or after a couple years when it's time to change your water, how you need to know it's time to change your water. So we're gonna go through all the long-term upkeep today. Yeah. So yeah, we'll take our first question. We have Mason in the back behind the camera. He's gonna be reading us the questions. If you guys have any questions, just comment and we'll get to all of them today. And if you're watching this when it's not live, still comment and we'll answer later on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> yes, first question. All right, so the first question is, when do you have to replace the water? So you have to totally drain and replace the water about every one and a half years if you're staying up on regular weekly and monthly maintenance. Sometimes you can stretch that out up to two years but generally it's about one and a half years. If you're not maintaining your water, you're probably gonna have to change it sooner just because your water will get old, it won't be able to stabilize, and it's really hard to recover um, rusted or dirty water. Yeah, so it's really important to stay up on water maintenance. Water maintenance is super easy. You know, if you're using it weekly, it's five, you know, probably 10 to 15 minutes, just depending on how much you're using it. But Part of what you're doing when you're doing water maintenance is you're, you know, you're going to lose water, you know, as you get out of the tank or to condensation. Same thing with salt. So you're going to, you know, top off the water as well as salt throughout, you know, time. As long as you do that, um, actually your water could go longer than two years because you'll actually, you know, eventually you'll replace all the water and salt just through water maintenance but at some point the water in there is not going to be able you're not going to be able to manage the ph and the alkalinity anymore and that's what mo is saying usually about one and a half to uh, two years is when that happens and you'll need to fully drain and uh, replace the salt and, and water but uh, like i say if you're staying up on your water maintenance you might not you could get it longer so it's really important just to stay on top of it yes okay so the second one is uh how do you know when it's time to change your water Okay, so like Randall was just saying, you won't be able to maintain pH or alkalinity. And basically every week, every two weeks, um, you're measuring the pH levels, which um, we have little test strips. With one of these. Right there. Yes, yeah, so you just dunk it in the water, compare the colors to the label on the back, and it won't, you'll know it's not stabilizing or you'll know it's old when, let's say, it's low, so you have to add pH up, and then you add pH up, and just a few minutes later, it's already back down, and it's telling you you have to add more. So when it won't just equalize and stay at a balanced pH level, that's when you'll know that you, the water's old and you have to drain and replace it. Yeah, so basically, when you keep adding pH up or down and, and trying to fix the pH up, and, or pH and alkalinity, and they won't change anymore, that's when you need to change the water. Okay, uh, what about uh, changing and upgrading old parts? So we periodically release new parts. We've upgraded our filtration system from a double pump to a single pump. And we release updates and new parts as we come across them. We're constantly searching what's the best product, what works the best. We're trying to upgrade and give you guys the best. So when we do that, when we release a new product, it's best to upgrade with us because it's probably going to be more efficient and better for your tank or tent. And so it'll just give you guys a better, easier flow and an easier ma maintenance process. Yeah, so basically when we email or get on Facebook or what have you and let you know we've got a new and improved part, that's when you should upgrade it. Yeah. So, and the, with, like uh, Mo just mentioned, you know, our first version tent had a two pump system which we had issues with i guess in the beginning so we sourced a new pump that we haven't had any issues with uh for the most part with for like two years i think right mason yep two years so uh that's why you would want to upgrade the part is because we found a, a much better and improved version but uh if your stuff is still working you can keep it that way too but we'll always be improving the tank so we'll always let you know 
Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you go about cleaning and disinfecting the tank? So every, along with regular maintenance, you can take, you can mix hydrogen peroxide with water to make more dilute uh, formula, I guess, and then you can simply just spray down the tank walls, the tent walls, wipe everything down, especially if you're fully draining the water, you'll want to get in there and like rinse the, or just scrub the tub really quickly, um, just to clean and disinfect everything. What was the, that question again, Mason? How do you go about cleaning and disinfecting the tank? Oh, okay. Yeah, everything most said. Yeah, so the hydrogen peroxide will help disinfect it. All right, what about uh, recovering dirty or old water? So this one, we, Mason, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, okay. but I believe you mix, you add 10, um, like 10 times the amount of hydrogen peroxide you normally add, and then come back later and check the levels, and if they're not okay, keep doing that until they're okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so Ten times the amount. It's a shock treatment. Okay. So. Okay, so that'll recover rusted water? No, so that's for dirty or old water. Oh, if okay. your water is dirty, you times your dose amount by 10, and then you give it two hours, and that shocks everything in this in the water, and it'll either kill or get rid of all the bacteria or all the buildup. So you just do 10 times the hydrogen peroxide, mm -hmm. and that's it? That's it. All right, cool. So shock that's called treatment. a yeah, shock treatment, shock basically. Treatment. Just uh, pump, yeah, pump it full of hydrogen peroxide. And is that the 35% hydrogen peroxide, 10, 10 times the amount? Yeah, it goes for both. So if, if you're working with 3%, um, which is 12 times more than 35, you're going to want to times that by 10, too. Okay. So. All right, cool. Good to know. I just learned something, everybody. <laughs> yep. There you go. Yeah, um, how do you drain the tank or the tent? Good question. Um, but there's several ways. Um, the easiest and no cost way is to siphon the water out um, by just getting a hose, basically, uh, you know, so that it reaches outside or to wherever you're draining it. And um, you know, the best way is to try to put the hose all the way in the tank to fill up the hose with water. Then you kink the hose and take it to where you're draining it. And with siphoning, it works with gravity, basically. So you have to have the bottom of the hose lower than the, the water level of the tank and then gravity will just suck out all the water. Um, it, this way it takes longer but it's free you know as long as you have a hose basically so or you can use a sump pump um, which you can find those on Amazon for a hundred bucks or something like that uh, that'll really speed it up so basically you just hook uh, your hose to a, a what's called a sump pump and you put it in there and it'll force all the water out to wherever you're draining it. Um, I think that's basically the ways to drain it, right? Yeah, and it's totally okay to drain it into a street drain or just drain it onto grass or gravel. Uh, Randall actually did some research and Epsom salt's really good for grass in a garden. The soil uses the minerals from the Epsom salt. The only thing you wanna be careful of is if you have a septic tank, you can't um, drain it all at once. It'll be too much Epsom salt for the septic tank So you have to do it in little parts or just drain it into the road. Yeah, so septic tanks, you know work by uh, Having a bacteria environment which eats all the garbage you put in your septic tank and Overloading it with Epsom salt will kill that bacteria and you'll have a real problem on your hands basically now if you're just getting out of a float session and you're going to take a shower and rinsing the salt off your body that's totally fine. That amount of salt going into your septic tank is fine, but hitting your septic tank with 800 pounds of Epsom salt is going to ruin that environment and you're going to have a costly problem there. So just like Mo said, you know, you can dump it on your grass, your garden. It's very good for us humans. You know, it's magnesium sulfate, which we need. So do plants. And, uh, and so you can really drain it anywhere. Just don't shock treat your septic tank with 800 <laughs> yeah. pounds of Epsom salt so um, but other than that if you're not on a septic tank you can dump it in your bathtub wherever you know it's it, uh, it's not a big deal just if you have a septic tank that's all you want to be aware of yep okay so this last one is a two-parter mm -hmm. um, it says what if I move how do I transport the tank and can I transport the water okay so if you move um, if your water is new and fresh 
you can just sump pump it or siphon it out and instead of draining it, put it into big barrels or big bins and then just move the water that way. And once all the water's out, just wipe it down, make sure everything's dry. And with the tanks, you can deflate it, fold it back up. With the tents, just undo the poles, fold it up, and it should be good to move. Yeah, so. you'll be able to fold it up back into this box and move it. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so as far as, uh, I guess, storing the water, you know, depending on how far you're moving, I've moved my tank in my house several times just to test around my house and different spaces, so I just, did the siphon method. Uh, basically, I siphoned the water into a kiddie pool and then siphoned it back into my tank after I moved it. But if you're like moving to a whole nother location, like Mo said, you're gonna wanna get barrels, something that you can close the water. Also, it's 200 gallons with 800 pounds of Epsom salt, so you wanna try to get containers that are maybe 25 gallons so it's not too heavy while you're moving it, which means you'd need eight containers that were 25 gallons. Um, but you want to do that basically if you can because otherwise replacing your salt water is going to cost you a thousand dollars from us it'll be four hundred and thirty two dollars for the salt and then usually another three or four hundred for shipping so that's why if you can you want to try to save the water now if you're at the time where you need to change your water anyways then it's not a big deal just drain it and move the, the tank and and change the water but uh, it is possible to move the, the salt water without losing it so I think that was all the questions. Yep. I think so too. Yeah. Do we have anything else on the board out there, Mason? On that? Um, just check in real point. quick for a couple more questions. And if you guys are watching and want to know anything, just comment and we'll get to it. Nothing. We're all good. All right. Sweet. Cool. Well, hopefully this was helpful, everybody. And also, um, as a bonus, uh, we're going to post some pictures from our factory um, just to, you know, have some cool picks for everybody especially those of you that backed us and have a tank coming we want to kind of show you all the tanks while they were being built in the factory now they're not there anymore they're on their way here but we're going to post some cool picks for everybody yeah those will be in the comments so check for those after the live ends was there something else you wanted me to remind you of i feel like you just said to remind you of something out there at the end of the video i don't think so okay not that i can remember so well, all right. that's all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Happy Wednesday. See ya.